So my name is Vita Frenhul and I teach first grade at the Elliott School in the North End. So in remote learning, um, I've been engaging my students by trying to obviously like make things interactive. I think for them, engagement is super important, especially in first grade, because if something is not um, like visually appealing or fun for them, it's going to be hard to maintain their focus. But um, an avenue that I've been thinking of, about a lot and kind of exploring as a professional is like project-based learning. So I've been able to, I was able to implement a lot of those um, during remote learning, not a lot of them, two of them, but, <laughs> um, and that was really great too, because it really incorporates um, student voice and choice. Um, they really get a lot of freedom to express their creativity and kind of choose how they want to show me what they know. I was able to kind of think a lot about using project-based learning to engage them, but also teach them a lot of fun things. So we did one on geography. Um, we did one about heroes. So we were able to think about community heroes, but also famous heroes who have changed the world. Um, and it's just been a fun way for them to kind of tap into those identities, but also um, incorporate some like important topics. So that has been really great. That's been super engaging for them during remote learning. Yeah, so it's really interesting because at first, um, when challenges came up, I ended up finding solutions and I'm like, maybe I want to incorporate this um, forever in my teaching practices, even when we go back fully in person. One example is during publishing parties at the end of writing units, it's super exciting to have them share their writing, kind of get it ready. We talk about how to make it look professional because we want them to really be proud of what they've produced. Um, so it was really hard not to do that in person. And sometimes we invite families to come and join us for those. And when we went remote, um, we ended up doing it on Zoom, but we found out that a lot more people could make it. So I had students who had family from Germany or Colombia tuning in and coming to our publishing party. So um, even though if a little bit sad at first and like, what am I gonna do? How are we gonna do the publishing parties? It ended up showing a lot of benefits. Um, and I just didn't think about it before. And not being physically in person, I've also had to be a little bit more creative about um, kind of like celebrations and how students present their work. So at the end of our last PBL project, um, one of the upper school specialists, she is really great. She told me about this platform and it's called Art Steps. And I was able to create an online art gallery of the portraits they created of their heroes. So even though we weren't able to see them in person with each other, it was super cool. They were really excited about seeing their artwork on a in a virtual art gallery. So it's really pushed me to think about what's out there and expand my tools, um, even though it's something I probably wouldn't have even thought about before. So I'm also, a lot of teachers probably know about this, but it's been super fun to like incorporate Bitmojis too, <laughs> because we had um, a Bitmoji classroom. So seeing our like Bitmoji versions, like every day they're like, oh, what's going to be next? Like, what is Miss Frenhul going to come up doing next? Um, so those have been really fun. I think that, um, again, um, some of the celebrations. So thinking about how we can engage the community as well. So inviting families. Um, we've also been able to invite people from the community to come and help teach things. I know that earlier this year, we had an author come visit us, um, Todd Parr. So thinking about, you know, things that maybe we could have done in the classroom and how can we make it remote. So really, um, you know, inviting families every Wednesday, um, we have a mystery reader. So they get really excited about that too, because um, family sign up like months ahead and someone comes from their family to be a mystery reader. It can be, I even had one of my students from last year, it could be a cousin, it could be a friend. Um, so they all, their faces always light up when they see like their grandma or their aunt that's in another state come and read a book to us. It's super exciting because it's a surprise for them too. Um, we also just find lots of ways to just celebrate and maintain kind of the excitement and magic around first grade learning. Um, so of course, like incentivizing to making sure that students feel celebrated every week, we have a student in the spotlight, um, that gets announced and they love that as well. But just thinking about 
sort of incentives, but also bringing in the community and kind of making it feel um, like everyone sees what they're doing, making sure that they feel validated and that we are like excited about the work that they're doing. Cause I know it can be super hard for a first grader. It was a really big transition. Um, in the spring, like they didn't really get much of a transition, but they really showed so much resilience in remote learning. They just kind of like, okay, this is how we're doing school. Let's do it. Um, so just making sure that they feel celebrated and that we see the hard work that they're doing. That's kind of was the focus when I was presenting at DESI. We talked a lot about Seesaw um, and using that platform to collect student work because one of the hardest things about remote learning as a teacher was not being able to see as many of their work samples, um, especially for writer's workshop. So it became a platform that we really relied on to be able to kind of keep up with collecting some data so it can inform our teaching and like small groups and knowing how to help students. So. Seesaw was really helpful because we were able to collect work samples for math, um, readers, writers, we were able to provide practice. Um, and it was super um, user friendly for a first grader. So they're able to upload things on their own, they can draw right on it, they could listen to voice messages. So I know a lot of students come in with different um, levels of like literacy so being able to read and write so it was really nice to provide those alternatives if you know students wanted to leave a voice message with each other or if I wanted to leave them some feedback with a voice note they would able to listen they would be able to listen to that too um, so seesaw was a great platform that we used at the beginning of the year um, right now we're in hybrid so we're not using it quite as much but at the beginning of the year it was definitely really useful just to like collect assessments um, but also provide feedback and just also fun activities. Like there were so many things that you could browse in the library that other teachers have done. And it was really, a, it was a really important tool and platform that we use at the beginning of the year, definitely. Something that I would say that I definitely had to keep reminding myself of is that this is new for everybody. So it's okay to just try something. Um, it's okay to try something to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. You can just try something else. Um, but definitely don't be afraid to try something new. Um, even like the online art gallery, I was like, this is new for me, um, even for the kids, but just try something because you might end up liking it so much that you want to keep it for your teaching when you go back in person and when life hopefully goes back to normal. So just go for it. I think that's something that's important to realize is that the pandemic has affected all of us in so many different ways and kind of remembering that um, they're whole people. So just kind of checking in with them emotionally, just taking, a, it's okay to take a break um, from all of this, like it's okay to just take a break so you can sing a song together or dance to a song together or just do something fun because I think that that piece was really important as well. I had to keep reminding myself of that. Um, the things that I was seeing um, from kids, like we, they all, you know, sometimes would be just be tired. Um, learning from Zoom every day was, can be exhausting. They're six and seven, year old, seven years old, even though they're super resilient. Um, it's important to take a step back and think about, you know, them as whole people, like what do they need right now? So a lot of emotional check-ins is really great. Um, we sometimes, well, every week we do a check-in where they kind of give me a number from one through five and each of the numbers on the screen have like a different um, emoji next to it. So five is really great. One is like, I didn't have a great day at all. Um, and I think that it means a lot to them. And I was also surprised by how many of them wanted to share why they were feeling that way. And I think that those are just good skills for them to develop too. But especially right now, for me, the most important thing that I wanted them to know was that my number one priority is that they're happy and healthy and safe. Um, because if kids are not happy, healthy and safe, they're not in a situation where they're they can learn. Um, I think that's the most important thing. So what I would say to teachers on how to best engage with your kids is to make sure that you remember that they're whole people and that their needs are going to be outside of, you know, the classroom and academic. Like sometimes they're going to just need someone to talk to. They're going to need someone to know that they care about how they're feeling. Um, they want someone to know that they care about their mental and emotional health. And just taking a break to do something fun once in a while too is super important to remind them that learning is fun. It's not just, you know, business. 
Yeah, so I am really hopeful for the future. Last Friday, um, over 60 of the teachers at our school um, got our first vaccine. So that was super exciting because it definitely relieves some anxiety around all of this, um, especially, you know, with more kids in the building and more people just being around each other. It's, it's really um, nice to know that we have that extra layer of protection to keep our community safe and healthy. And I think that we're definitely going to have to um, adapt. And I think that it does have some, it has had some long-term effects on children's education and also just like us as teachers, um, not all in bad ways. Of course, we, we learn some things that we might want to bring into the classroom long-term, but I also think that it, I'm looking forward to kids being able to like socialize normally with their friends. I think that has been really hard for them, especially teaching first grade. Um, their social identity is such a big part of who they are right now and they really miss being around their friends. So that is a part that I think is going to, you know, have an effect on children, but I'm looking forward to the days where they can be learning in a classroom together and, you know, hugging their friends and things like that. I think that has been really hard for them, but I'm really hopeful um, for the rest of the school year and just like the future. I think that things are definitely starting to look up and we're all just really excited to even be in the hybrid model and being together in class again. I just want to say to people that like, you did great this year, even though sometimes we might feel like it wasn't our best, like given the circumstances, we were able to do so much. And I just think that it's really important to acknowledge that too. Sometimes we get so bogged down on like what we didn't do or what we didn't get to or what felt like it was missing. It's really important to remember like all the things that you did do and that was there. So just give yourselves a pat on the back. It was a tough year for teachers and for students and for families and for everyone um, involved with kids who are in school. So um, we're all just doing our best and that's right now that's good enough.